Welcome to Financial Statement Analysis Lecture 5, Part C, The Problem with Traditional DuPont Analysis. When we conduct ratio analysis as part of evaluation, we know that companies create value when they earn a return higher than their cost of capital. And we know that value is generated by the company's operating activities, with the primary drivers of value being growth and profitability of the company. We know that financing is a distribution of value, and that's why we have to reformat the financial statements into operating and financing. So we can split up the operating performance and the financing performance, knowing that the operations of the business is where the firm is going to create value, that is, generate returns higher than their cost of capital. So understanding the value drivers of a business under require an understanding of the operating activities and the financing activities. So when we do ratio analysis, we want to make sure our ratios focus on either the operating activities or the financing activities. And they don't get mixed up. The financing activities aren't going to affect our operating ratios and vice versa. So our first ratio that we look at is return on equity. And return on equity starts off with a very simple formula. We can take the net profit of a firm and divide through by the average owner's equity. And that will give us the return on equity. And this is something you'll have seen in your introductory accounting subjects. And it's a very common way of measuring return on equity. We can use this to evaluate the company's profitability if they're earning a return higher than their cost of capital. And it can be quite useful as a tool for those reasons. However, when we actually want to understand the drivers of firm performance, the return on equity formula here doesn't do enough for us. So we then learn that we can break down return on equity using a DuPont analysis, and we can break a return on equity into net income over sales, times sales over average total assets, times average total assets over average equity. And if you do the algebra, you can cross out the sales on the denominator here with the numerator here, and you can cross out the average total assets denominator here with the average total assets numerator here, and you would be left with net income over average owner's equity. That is the same formula, net income over average shareholder's equity. So we understand that the maths works, the algebra works, that's all fine. This is a good way of calculating return on equity. It's a starting point to break down the firm's performance into its profit margin, turnovers, and financial leverage. Now, this is going to be a little bit of revision again on last week. Last week, I briefly touched on the problems with this sort of traditional DuPont analysis. I'm going to expand on it a little bit more again, but it is revision because it's an important point before we present the solution of a more advanced DuPont analysis that fixes the problems that I'm about to outline. As we step through the return on equity formula broken down into a DuPont analysis, the first term, net income over sales, is called the profit margin. Net income divided by sales is our profit margin. It's part of the operations of the business. The next term, sales over average total assets, this is called asset turnover. And again, it gives us an indication about the firm's operating performance. And then the final term, average total assets divided by average owner's equity, is called leverage or financial leverage. And again, it tells us about the financing aspects of the business. So in theory, the DuPont analysis breaks down the operating activities and financing activities. The operating activities are profit margin and asset turnover, and they're closely linked to our business's strategy. Then on the financing side, how much debt we have gives us our financial leverage. So DuPont analysis tries to break down the operating and financing activity. Profit margin times asset turnover, we can do some algebra, cross out the sales denominator with the sales numerator here, and we get net income over average total assets. That's also called our return on assets. Again, that's trying to measure operating performance. Profit margin and asset turnover should only be affected by changes in the business operations, while our financing activities should be the only thing that affect the financial leverage calculation here. But as I step through some examples, we'll see that that's not always the case. So same example as last week, just to refresh your memory. If I save a million dollars and buy an apartment in Sydney, after four years, I sell the apartment for 1.2 million. So I've made a profit of $200,000. So my profit margin, the $200,000 profit over the $1.2 million in sales, I calculate my profit margin as 16.67%. My asset turnover, my sales over total assets of a million, my turnover was 1.2. My leverage, a million dollars in assets over a million dollars in equity, I get a leverage of one. ROE, profit margin times asset turnover times financial leverage, ROE is 20%. That's all working perfect there, no problems. 
Now add in some financing. I borrow some money from the bank. I borrow $500,000 from the bank at 3% interest. That means during the year, 3% times 500,000 times four years, I'm gonna have interest of $60,000 overall. So my profit margin, I will now have profit of 140,000. $200,000 profit on the sale, minus my $60,000 in interest expense, divided by my overall sales, I get a new profit margin of 11.67%. The interest expense lowered the profit margin. Then ATO stays the same, and my leverage is now different. I've got a million dollar asset, but only $500,000 of equity, so my financial leverage is two. I recalculate ROE, my profit margin's different because of the interest expense, asset turnover stays the same, and my financial leverage has increased to two because I've borrowed some money. My ROE is now increased to 28%. So the problem here is that a financing activity, borrowing money and having that interest expense influenced one of my operating ratios. We don't want that. We want our operating ratios to only reflect the business operations. So that's an indication of a problem here. Next, I'm gonna change this example a small amount. My interest rate now has dropped to 2%. I've refinanced the loan, which is a financing activity, and it's changed my interest rate. As I go through the same example, now that I have to pay less interest over the four years, my profit margin is again different. So changing the interest rate which is a financing activity, changed my profit margin. But changing the interest rate didn't change my leverage. Now leverage is meant to pick up the financing activities of the firm. Refinancing my loan to get a different interest rate is clearly a financing activity. But in this analysis, it's only changing my profit margin and not changing my leverage. My return on equity increases. I've done a financing activity. My profit margin increases. Financial leverage didn't change and my ROE went up. So the problem is changing the interest rate influenced my operating returns. Okay, so changing the amount I've borrowed and changing the percentage interest rate that I borrow at both influenced my operating returns here. Okay, so far so good for asset turnover though. So we can trust the asset turnover so far. Let's look at problems with that. I'm changing my example now. I'm just operating a very simple business such as a cafe. I've got total assets of 100,000, liabilities of 50,000, and owner's equity of 50,000. My accounting equation balances, assets equals liabilities. My profit was 25,000 based on sales of 250,000. So profit margin, net profit, divided by my sales, I've got a profit margin of 10%. My asset turnover ratio, my sales over my total assets is 2.5. My leverage, I've got 100,000 of assets and I've got 50,000 of liability and equity each. So the assets over equity gives me a leverage of two. My ROE is 10% profit margin times 2.5 asset turnover times financial leverage of two. I get an ROE of 50%. Very, very successful cafe here. Let's make a little change here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a change to an operating activity here. That is on the final day of the year, I decided to pay my staff salary. Now, imagine I had part of my liability was salary payable. Previously, my employees have done the work for me. I've recorded the expense correctly, so that's changed my net profit, but I have a salary payable as a liability. Now, if I choose to pay that salary payable amount on the last day of the year, so I pay $25,000 cash as wages to my staff, the previously recorded wages liability will reduce and my cash amount will reduce by the same amount. So we know that that shouldn't affect our return on equity. Just simply substituting cash for a liability won't change my return on equity. And we know that that shouldn't really change my asset turnover ratio because it's not really changing the amount I'm selling or how well I'm utilizing my assets. It's not a financing activity, so it shouldn't change my financial activities. However, when we do the DuPont analysis, my profit margin, 25,000 in profit, divided by 250,000 in sales is 10%. That stays the same. This transaction didn't affect my profit margin. However, by lowering my assets by 25,000 and also lowering my liabilities by 25,000, it's changed my asset turnover ratio. My total assets decreased from 100,000 to 75,000 because of this transaction, which has changed my asset turnover. Asset turnover was 2.5. By paying my staff, I have reduced my assets. My asset turnover ratio now looks higher.
that's not really true. My, I haven't actually become a more productive or effective business by making this payment one day earlier, but it's had a big effect on my ratio here. And my leverage has changed. My total assets now are only 75,000 because I paid out some cash, but my equity is still 50,000. So my leverage has now changed to 1.5. This was not a financing activity. I didn't uh, borrow money from the bank and I don't have any future interest rate payments based on this. I've just paid a liability that I owe. It's an operating transaction. It's changed my financial leverage. ROE is still the same due to changes in my asset turnover and leverage. So here's a problem. A simple operating transaction like paying my staff influenced both my asset turnover ratio and my financial leverage ratio. So again, this, this creates some problems for us. So overall, the basic DuPont analysis and traditional ratio analysis doesn't correctly attribute changes in our operating and financing activities to the respective ratios. So we have a solution. The solution is that we have to reformat the financial statements, which we've already discussed in detail. We separate the operating and financing activities. Then we conduct an advanced DuPont analysis, which keeps the operating activities in their section, the financing activities in their section, and they don't interact with each other. So we can clearly attribute the business's performance to either their operations or their financing activities. It gives us a much clearer picture of the true performance of the business and where they're actually generating value for shareholders. So what is the advanced DuPont analysis? Well, we're gonna take return on equity is equal to no PAT over sales, Net operating profit after tax is from our reformatted income statement. This is our new operating profit margin ratio. Then we multiply it by sales divided by net operating assets. This is our new operating asset turnover ratio plus financial leverage times spread. Financial leverage is how much we've borrowed and spread is the difference between the amount we pay in interest and the returns we get on our investment. So this is taking into account changes in interest rates will affect our financing activities and changes in the amount we have borrowed will affect our financing activities. And then only operating profits and operating assets will affect our profit margin and asset turnover ratio. So next up, we're gonna go into a lot more detail on the advanced DuPont analysis.